Good morning, everybody. This is Zach Zedit again. I'm your host, Zach Cooley, and I'm very happy to be here with Gina Harper. Uh, she is the leader of the With White Toppers. Thank you for being with us, Gina. Oh, I'm glad to be talking with you, Zach. Well, can you tell me about what your group is and uh, and and what they what they do exactly? Okay, um, we are uh, sponsored by District Three Government Co-op, mm -hmm. and uh, we are the Friendship Cafe West Hill Friendship Cafe. We meet at the West Hill Presbyterian Church in uh, Thatcher Hall. And we meet on Thursdays, and we usually get there around 9, and we leave about 12.30. Uh, we have devotions and pledge. We do the pledge. Um, we do a nutrition, an exercise, something informative like scam, uh, different medicines and stuff. And then uh, we have a raffle and bingo, and um, then we serve a hot lunch catered by Food City and Marion. Okay, and you have several groups that you're involved in or the leader of, is that correct? Yes, I also do the Marion Friendship Cafe and the Ivanhoe Friendship Cafe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Ivanhoe Friendship Cafe, uh, uh, the, the uh, mutual friend of ours that contacted me was Miss Patty Manuel. Um, she became involved because her mother was involved. Um, and um, now, do, does all of your do all of your groups uh, do, they cater to seniors, right? Uh, yes, uh, sixty and older, and um, they can if someone is a caregiver for uh, either a disabled child or another. Uh, uh, older person, then they are more than welcome to bring them to the meeting as well. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, we're dedicated to seniors. So somebody like me who is disabled and wheelchair bound, um, uh, uh, would would I qualify to attend if I? You wouldn't qualify to attend as a member, but you're welcome to come as a guest at any time. I see. I see. Okay. Anybody can come as a guest at any time. Okay. All right. And uh, you had a very important ceremony on May the 26th in Ivanhoe. Can you tell me about what that what that was? Well, I did uh, Ivanhoe May 26th. Uh, uh, Whistle group did the 27th. And, uh, my Marine group did it today, and that is a flag retirement. Um, mm -hmm. We had we used the Girl Scout uh, version of a flag retirement. I was a Girl Scout leader for Troop 117 in Ivanhoe mm -hmm. for 17 years, mm -hmm. me and my mother. And so I just do that, and the seniors do all the roles that the girls would do. And they just really enjoy it. A lot of them have never seen the ceremony before. Um, we do not, uh, in a Girl Scout ceremony, we do not put the entire flag uh, in at one time. It is cut up. So each field, the blue field is separated first, and then we do each of the stripes. Okay. So can you explain to me, as somebody who's never seen a flag retirement ceremony, what that is and what that represents? It is a flag funeral. Mm -hmm. And it is for we take uh, flags that have been used. Uh, they're tattered, they're torn, they're faded, they're dirty. And uh, we will um, give them a final funeral. They are given a final salute. And then it is a very reverent, very solemn. Uh, it is just to pay high respect to the flag. Okay, all right. And was there any particular uh, thing special about the flags that you retired this go around? Where uh, no, they were just all uh, donated by different uh, groups and different people. Um, they just give us their torn and their tattered. Uh, the Ivanhoe flag was given to us by the Ivanhoe Othello, um mm -hmm. from the 
from their cemetery. So, but, okay. Um, yeah. But uh, after the flag retirement and the ashes um, are burned, then I put the ashes in little baggies. And anybody that wants them, they can take the ashes and scatter them on either a veteran's grave or they can just scatter them into the wind, you know, uh, in memory of somebody. So they really like that. They like having a piece. But the most prized possession of a black retirement ceremony is the gauntlet, the little round hooks that hang to the flag. Um, Usually they are given to a veteran in the group, and then the other one is just given to someone out of honor. So. Sure, sure. And, of course, I guess in your senior group you have many veterans in the group. Uh, actually, I have one from each group. Really? I have two ladies. I had a, a lady from Marion. Her name is Martha Poster. Mm -hmm. And I have a lady from Ivanhoe, and her name is Cynthia Copeland. And we had one gentleman from Whistle, and his name is Gary Donaldson. All right. So the, all three of those are um, war veterans. And I'm yes. glad you mentioned their names because we want to honor them. Uh, do you know where they are veterans from? Uh, no, not. Not each one of them. I know mm -hmm. um, Martha was, um, I believe it's called a lap. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I know that's what she was. So okay. I don't know. I know Gary is a member of the BSW mm -hmm. uh, there at Whitfield and does a lot of the conducting of the funerals. And he, put, uh, he puts the flags on the veterans' graves. Uh, with the VSW. So. Oh, good. Each good. one of my so each one of my veterans um, was the one that lay. You lay the blue field after the red and white stripes are burned. Then you lay the blue field on top, and um, in the ceremony, the veteran is to kiss the blue and then lay it on top and then stand back and salute. And um, Gary was not there at the whistle meeting, but his wife Linda stepped in for him. So, and she was very honored to be, you know, in his shoes for the day. Very good, very good. And it sounds like a very reverent, very uh, patriotic ceremony. Is this something that you've done before with your groups? Uh, about three years ago, I did it with my Murray and group, and. Um, I think I have done it with my Ivanhoe group before. This is the first time my whistle group has got to participate in one. Oh, well, great, great. So, well, lots of the seniors, this is their first time ever seeing a flag retirement. Right. And uh, as Patty was saying, uh, there were a lot of tears shed uh, at those ceremonies. It can be very emotional. Yes, sir. They, uh, it's, it's very reverent, very emotional, the readings that you read, um, they are, you know, it really tells the story. Okay, so what sort of readings are accompanied with that? Uh, it, it's just the Girl Scout version. It's, it's all written out for you. You just read it like scripture. So uh, it just talks about the sacrifice that was given for the flag, that uh, when the flag was... Uh, you know, made that each uh, star was added on the 4th of July, and um, it's just, it just talks about how it respects and that it reminds you of um, all the soldiers that have laid down their lives for that flag. Mm -hmm. In the last 246 years. Yes. Yeah. This is, you know, so many, um, I mean, there's not a person in this country that's not connected to a veteran in some way, uh, a parent, a grandparent, a great-grandparent, great-great-grandparent, on, on, and on, you know. And, and yeah, uh, they, we had a table at each uh, meeting, and uh, we set it up, and people brought pictures in of all their loved ones. And it, was, it was real nice, and they had them labeled as the 
who uh, whose pitcher it was, who the person was, when they served. So. Yeah, that's very important. And uh, you have been the leader of these groups for how long now? Uh, for five years. Okay. For all of them? I'm a cancer years. survivor, and I was bed fast for eight years. And uh, when I got cancer free, I said I wanted to do something. And um, the opportunity came along, and they needed a leader at Ivanhoe. And somehow or another, I was suckered in a whip one Mary and two, but I love every minute of it. Well, I tell my Mary group all the time, I said, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't drive an hour each way because I live in Ivanhoe. And I said, I wouldn't drive an hour each way uh, just to come up here for one day. You know, so I said, I really love my job. A lot of people go to work and they're not happy with their job or, you know, it's all doom and gloom. But I said, you know, I'm, I'm always blessed because they let me know that they love me and, um, you know, I'll, I can help them. I read their mail. I, you know, some uh, I help them fill out forms and read their mail and put them in the right place to get the things that they need, like fans, and air conditioners, that type of thing. So I really like. No, well, and it sounds like that uh, that sort of God's purpose is what you were meant to do. Yes, <laughs> I worked for Mount Rogers for seventeen years. So mm -hmm. uh, that's what my life's dedication has been is to help others. So. Well, bless you for that. Um, are you an Ivanhoe native? Uh, yes. I live, I'm 47. I lived there my whole life. My parents, my great-grandparents, my grandparents. Um, I live in my great-grandparents' home. And uh, all five generations have lived in that house. So, uh, even my daughter was raised there, so. Well, that's wonderful. Um, my daddy was a minor. Yeah. Um, my family, uh, my great-grandmother, my great-great-aunt, um, my great-great-aunt ran the bowling alley or, or, or um, oversaw the bowling alley and the kids' programs in Austinville. So, oh, neat. So, uh. My, Austinville is a, a place that's very near and dear to my heart, and it was once a very thriving community, and so was Ivanhoe. So. Yes, a lot of people don't know, you know, all the history that is with Ivanhoe and stuff, but uh, we had our own opera house, theater, everything, you know, it comes through long. Not there now, but, you know, but as long as the memory of it's still alive, it'll always be there. That's right, and uh, all of all of these communities were very, were very, very important to the. You're talking about veterans going back to the Revolutionary War. You know, all of them ammunition that was made for the Revolutionary War. A big chunk of it was made at the shot tower in Austinville, and Ivanhoe made it too. So, yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. All the iron ore furnaces and the carbide plants. Uh, I've had a rock quarry. We had the mines. Yeah, you know, it was. We had a lot of industry at one time, mm -hmm. and we had the railroad. My father's father, he was a railroad man, and my mother's father was a miner. So I come from a long line of miners. <laughs> yep, and very very important to the industry of of our community and of of the whole country, really. Yes. That that people don't understand. And there's still things happening in Ivanhoe, like your group and like the Ivanhoe Civic League that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, one thing I'd like to say about the seniors, you do not have to be from Ivanhoe. You don't have to be from Westland. You don't have to be from Marion to go to one of the meetings. Uh, okay. Well, thank you for We'll take you from anywhere. <laughs> well, good. And how many members do you have in your various groups? In the Marion group, I have about 40 on the roll. Uh, in my Ivanhoe group, I have 35 on roll. And in my Whiffle group, I have about 45 on roll. 
Forty-five. Okay. Now, where yeah. and when you meet in Whitfield, where do you meet? Uh, at the Whitfield Presbyterian Church. Okay. In Hatcher, Hatcher or Hatcher Hall. You, you, uh, Presbyterian Church. You did say that earlier, and I. And I That's all right. Uh, my Marion group meets at the uh, Marion Police Department in the W.W. W. Scott Center okay. on South Park Street. And my Ivanhoe group, they meet, uh, Ivanhoe meets on Wednesdays, and they meet for, uh, at the Ivanhoe Fire Department. And they're all the same time. We open about 9, and we're out of there by about 1230. Okay, so it's a nice, it, it's a monthly meeting? Uh, it's a weekly meeting. A weekly meeting, okay. It's a weekly meeting, and um, we, uh, COVID has let up a little bit, and uh we're finally going to get to start taking our trips again. So they're allowed uh, four trips a year. So, oh, good. So what what kind of trips do you take? Um, they all have to be within 90 miles of the site. And mm -hmm. um, as long as we're in the state of Virginia, we're allowed to go as far as Bristol. Um, and But we have to stay in the state of Virginia and across the state line. So mm -hmm. they can go anywhere. <laughs> so where have you been in the past? Where does the where does oh, the group uh, like to go? My favorite spot is has to be Floyd. They like going to Floyd to the general store and riding on the parkway and going to Mabry Mill and um they just like to take the ride down the parkway and go to Floyd is a big popular one. Um I have one group right now planning on a trip to Wolf Creek Indian Village and Big Walker Lookout. I have another group planning to go to Floyd, and my other group is going to Stockville. Well, that's great. So you're busy all over the state, then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Busy all over well, the I'm gonna I'm gonna make another plug. I'm also the community person for Ivanhoe that does all the parades and uh, Christmas and Halloween and Easter parties, and uh, I'd just like to invite everybody to come to. Uh, I'm having a 4th of July parade, July 4th at 4 p.m. Everybody's welcome. Sure, we want to get all the information we can out about that. And I know you know my good friend, Teeny Underwood, that's been a lifelong uh, Ivanhoe citizen. And, uh, yes, she was, I sure think I see me. And she was always big in those things. I know that. Her, her mama B was the grandmaster of the Ivanhoe Parade a couple of times. And now, um, Teeny led it last year, uh, last 4th of July, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in memory of Maxine Waller. So. Right. Uh, Matt, and talk about somebody who got things done in Ivanhoe. Maxine was always busy doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. Um, and uh, they, I think they even got my uh, father involved. At one time, he was a member of the Ivanhoe Civic League. So, uh, yeah, the Civic League is just about non-existent at this point, but uh, we still have a good community um, group, and everybody's trying to work together and stuff. So, um, just everybody, you know. Everything started dying down, people got discouraged and everything, but now we're building it back up again. So. Well, good, good, because it's so important for, you know, as I said, being a member of, uh, being disabled and a member of the community, but it's so important that these people, our, our elderly people that have given so much to the community, it's important that we don't forget them and that we learn from them and continue to give back to them what they've given to us. And I know that. Yes, it is. And I know that's a big part of of what you do uh, with your with your job and your in your works. Yeah, yeah. I I just like to. Uh, I was. It was said at one time. Rumor got passed around and said that. Uh, I was pulling community service for jail time. Mm. And I said, Lord have mercy. I'd like to know what I did because I started volunteering uh, when I was 13 years old with the Civic 
Basically, and I've been volunteering ever since with everything in Ivanhoe. And uh, I said, I would really like to know what I did. So I probably should have went to jail by this time if I had to pull that much meat. If you were pulling that that many years, yeah, I would think so. It's yeah. it's amazing what the green-eyed monster will do to some people, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, but life's, too, life's too short to be miserable. Everybody needs a smile on their face. Isn't that the truth? And, and uh, you know, these communities like Ivanhoe and Austinville are too important to uh, too important to the history of our area and our country to let slip through the cracks. And um, and I commend you in what you're doing and keeping these in keeping these community activities alive. All right. Uh, before we uh, finish off or anything, I'd just like to put my information out there. Um, like I said, I'm Gina Dunford Harper. Uh, my cell phone number is 276-284-0601, and my home number is 276-699-1166. And if anybody has any questions about um, um seniors or uh, what the seniors can do for you, uh, just give me a holler anytime. And uh, we'll certainly do that, and I'll be sure and put all your information in the article, and uh, I appreciate your time. Well, and uh, we'd love for you and your family to come over to one of the meetings anytime you want to and talk to the seniors, and uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate you coming. Well, thank you. We would enjoy that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.